Hey there and welcome to the Codemakers channel. In this video I would like to show you a very graphical explanation for why I prefer to use handlers instead of services. And what you see here on this screen is actually an extract and a simplification from an application that I have worked on recently. So the scenario was that we had this application, it was a missed application for a law firm and that application specifically handled some payments that need, needed to be made. And obviously those payments needed to have certain authorizations and there was also a certain type of workflow like who could authorize, when it could authorize and so on and so forth. So the problem is that we had a very regular setup with the repositories and with the services. And what happened for instance if we just want to get a payment it's very simple we use the service and the service using was using the repository to get the payment so everything is fine. With editing a payment once again it seems to be exactly the same but at the end we also need to save that. And if we want to create a new payment obviously we just create it and we save it in the database. Now the fun part comes when for instance we have this finance controller in which finance user would be able to perform certain types of authorization steps on payments depending on what exactly the payment is, when it should be done and so on. If we want to just take a look at a payment that needs to be authorized that's very simple and straightforward. But however the payment or the authorization or the finance actions they also needed to get information about the payment and therefore we were using the payment repository. Of course you could use the payment service for that but the idea is the same. You still need to go outside this finance context into the payment context to get that specific information. So when it comes to authorization here is where everything gets messed up and where the, really the pain point is with using services. Because what we need to do is first of all we need to find the information regarding finance but then we also need to find information about the payment itself using the payment repository. And then we perform some changes and then we have to actually persist those changes and first we will also probably persist them in our finance controller but also we would need to persist or make changes on the payment itself so we would use the payment repository to persist those changes and here is actually where everything starts to go south because you are simply reusing a lot of the information or a lot of the methods from other services to a point that you would have to introduce kind of like boolean flags or things like that in services to just have different branching depending on some circumstances and that can get really messed up very fast and that's when exactly you start to get this type of behavior when you are fixing a bug or adding a new feature to something and you see that something else is broken that you didn't think about the answer to this is to try to extract all this type of functionality into self-contained slices of functionality like really each one of them and here comes where this idea of handler comes in because now or with this approach for really every action in the application we have one and only one handler that is responsible to handle or to do something when that action happens and then obviously to create a response for that under the hood obviously the handler would use the database it could use different other things, it would perform some logic, but in the end we have a complete encapsulation in the handler for each action. This means that each action in your application will be self-contained and self-sufficient. And this means in turn that if you make some changes to one handler, it will not effect, affect any other handlers in your application. So this type of scenario where you fi are fixing something in, in some place and then you cause problems in another place, is reduced drastically using this concept of handlers. Obviously, in this case, we need to be careful not to just call handlers from other handlers because then we will end up having exactly the same problem. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and like this video if you did enjoy it and subscribe to the Code Wrinkles channel if you are for the first time here. And if you have any questions, don't be shy and head over to the comment section and leave your comment. I would be more than happy to get in touch with you. This being said, thank you very much for watching and until the next time I wish you the very best.